so uh, in in case of uh, previous year it is always a accounting year or financial year starting from 1st april ending on 31st march every year so that is going to be the previous year and assessment year is nothing but the assessment year is the year in which the income is taxed please try to understand the year in which the income is taxed it is called assessment year so previous year is the financial year so try to understand previous year means financial year and in case of assessment year the year in which year in which income is taxed right to understand the year in which income is tax is known as assessment year now there is no need to keep these two separately but government is yet to take the decision going ahead with this that means there are number of definitions uh, we have to cover the number of topics so i'm not going to uh, i'm not going in detail but what is the definition of assess what is the uh, definition of um, uh, income um basically in income tax uh, act the in definition of income is not exactly def defined it is it includes income includes number of things so even though it is a income tax act of 1961 they have not given the exact definition of income you just study when you are going to be um, uh, after this lecture uh, you just take the definition of income it includes income includes because government wants to add now new things also so they are not going to restrict the definition of income aisa nahi ki income ki definition exact definition diya hai barabar definition diya hai wo kya bolte hai income mein kya kya aata hai wo batate hai so that is the another thing in case of income tax act now going ahead with that because now we are going to discuss about income from salary but before that you must know the other concepts and then it is very easy for understanding the uh, concept of income from salary now you once you know the category of person once you know the previous year once you know the assessment year then the next part is very important the residential status of a person now please try to understand it is very essential to know the residential status of any person that is the another thing which we have to keep in mind while uh Uh, uh, discussing about the income tax so please try to understand the definition of uh, uh, residential status now residential status means in case of a person again we are going to take the suppose mr a now we are going to de determine whether he is a resident of india or non resident of india so that is very important the residential status of a person so a person may be resident of india or not non non resident of india now th those who are uh, already studied the income tax they are very <clears throat> uh, aware of the fact that the residential status of a person depends upon the number of stay in india so please try to understand those who are newcomers or who are, uh, are yet to study the income tax so residential status ke bare mein criteria kya hai kis ke hisab se residential status determine hota hai that is going to be on the number of stay in india normally i am not going to in detail but normally if a person is in india for more than 182 days then he is going to be a resident of india and if he is not if he stay in india is less than 182 days we call his hand as non resident now why it is going to be the 182 days now you are going to ask the question the 182 days means 50% of total that is 365 days out of that if he is in india more than 182 days we are going to call him as resident of india if he is less than 182 days we are going to call him as non resident now uh, just for one minute there is nothing to do with the uh, citizenship of india a person may be of citizen of india but his stay in india may be the less than 182 days so that he becomes non resident so try to understand the definition of residential status is nothing to do with the citizenship of india he may be a citizen of india or may not be a citizen of india 
the residential status determines the number of days on the basis of number of days stay in India. So please try to understand, don't get confused with the residential status with the citizenship of India. Now you are going to ask me the question, why residential status is very, very important and why you are discussing residential status. Now the basic thing is that the residential status is very important because in case of resident of India, the whole uh, income earned in the whole world, the income earned earn in the whole world is taxable. मैं बात एक बात बताता हूँ residential एक बार resident of India है आदमी एक बार resident of India हो गया तो उस उसका जो भी income globally पूरा विश्व में जो कमाता है वो that is going to be taxable. But if the person is non-resident, that means a person uh, is uh, not a resident of India, then only Indian income is going to be taxable. So that means if his income is in India and uh, 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 he has also earned outside India, in case of non-resident, his income earned in India is going to be taxable. His other income is not taxable in India. So please try to understand a person, you have to determine the residential status of a person. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind, a person may be a resident of India or maybe a non-resident. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to explain you. Uh, once you know the category of a person, I'm, I'm going to start once again, those who are joined late. Uh, once you know the category of a person, that means uh, individual or HUF or partnership firm or company or AOP or BOI or it may be a uh, local authority, it may be an artificial juridical person. Ek bar wo tay ho gaya ki ye a, a person uh, definition wo individual ke baare mein puch raha hai ya kuch uh, do, uh, company ke baare mein puch raha hai. The next part is you are going to ask the previous year of that person. Then you are going to determine the assessment year. Ye hone ke baad uska income hum puchne wale hai. Ki whether, yeah, how much is your income in the particular financial year or previous year? But before that, you must know his residential status. Uska jo hai, whether he is a resident of India or non-resident of India. Because why it is he very important? Because in case of resident of India, the income earned, that means here I'm going to here already written, global income is taxable. Try to understand his income earned in the whole world is taxable. But in case of non-resident, please try to understand. His income earned in India is only taxable. Try to understand. A person is non-resident. In, in that case, income earned in India is only going to be the taxable. His global income is not taxable. So in case of non-resident, only income earned in India is taxable. In case of resident of India, whole income earned in the whole world is going to be taxable. Jo pura income hai, wo taxable hota hai, India mein. So, Please try to understand a person may be a resident of India or he may be a non-resident. Dono nahi ho sakta. Ek admi resident ya ho sakta hai ya non-resident hai. E resident ho gaya to iska matlab non-resident nahi hai. Non-resident ho gaya to iska matlab resident nahi hai. Please try to understand. When you are going to discuss, when you are going to guide any uh, person, maybe you are giving consultancy or any kind of advice, please try to understand that he may be a resident of India or he may be a non-resident of India. So please try to understand, we, we are going ahead with this. So once you know why it is important, residency status ke baare mein hum kyu baat kar rahe? Because jo resident of India hota hai, iska matlab, normally his stay is in India is more than 182 days. That means his stay in India is more than 50%. Isi liye usko bolte hai, resident of India. Or Jiska stay in India, Uske Pure financial year may exo asike exo but 182 is or less than that, then we are going to call him as non-resident. Yes. So now we are going, going ahead uh, with this. This another concept is very important. Now I am going ahead with the uh, heads of income. Before heads of income, I'm uh, within four, four to five minutes, I'm going to discuss. Uh, basic part of another concept is that now in case of income, there are two types of income. Income is of two types. Now, <clears throat> income, one is taxable income 
and another is tax free income or exempted income so please try to understand there are two types of income one is taxable income and another is tax tax free or exempted income so this we are again going to discuss a, in, a person may have earn income during the year a person may have in, earn income during the year but we have to determine whether is it taxable income or tax free income iska matlab income hai what is meant by tax free income or exempted income that means the person has earned in, uh, income in the uh, in india during the previous year but that income is not taxable it is exempted under section 10 so please try to understand under section 10 that means under section 10 means the uh, section number 10 they have given the various categories of income exempt from tax again i am going to discuss that the, it is going to be income of that person but it is not to be included as a taxable income because it is tax free income i am going to give one example to you if a person mr a is there he is the agriculturalist he is get, uh, get, getting income from agriculture in that case whether his income is uh, uh, taxable in india yes it is income in india but it is not taxable in india because agricultural income earned in india is tax free or it is not taxable so please try to understand whenever we are going to discuss about any person first of all we are going to make a list of income earned by him and then we are going to classify which income is going to be taxable and which is going to be non taxable non taxable means tax free or exempted or on which tax is not payable non taxable so please try to understand ye aapko kahan pata chalega तो सेक्शन 10 ऑफ इनकम टैक्स एक्ट 1961 गिव्स द लिस्ट ऑफ द इनकम व्हिच इज टैक्स फ्री सो प्लीज ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड इफ यू हैव टू टेक अ कॉल यू हैव टू कंफर्म देन रिफर द सेक्शन अंडर सेक्शन 10 देयर आर अ नंबर ऑफ कैटेगरी आर गिवन व्हिच इज इनकम अर्न बाय द एसएससी बट इट इज नॉट टैक्सेबल इट इज टैक्स फ्री इनकम और एग्जेम्प्टेड इनकम नाउ गोइंग अहेड विद दैट if the income is not tax free then we are, it is going to be taxable again in case of residential status we have already discussed a person may be a resident or non resident similarly income may be taxable or non taxable a same income cannot be taxable as well as non taxable ek to taxable hoga ya non taxable hoga so please try to understand when we are talking about the income also take a, uh, uh, information from that person regarding the income earned by him in the during the financial year but at the same time you note down that whether that income is taxable or non taxable if it is non taxable the the, the person may have earned the income usko usko usi sal jo income mila hai wo income hai lekin it is not taxable it is tax free income so on which tax is not to be paid now please try to understand it is very important because the next step is if it is a taxable income we are going to divide the taxable income under the five heads of income please try to understand if it is a tax free income we are going to note down that it is a tax free income but we are not going to divide the income tax free income in any further category but if it is a taxable income we are going to classify the his income under the five heads now i am going ahead with the uh, Uh, this taxable income and i am going to discuss the heads of income but before that if you have any query, query you write down in the chat box so i am going to explain you otherwise i am going to start income from salary so now we are going to discuss about income from salary if any query so koi query the ke bachcho if there is any queries please ask in the chat box yes now i am going ahead with the <clears throat> this uh, heads of income first of all the income is divided under the five heads of income so these are the five heads that is first is income from salary income from house property income from business or profession income from capital gain and income from other source so uh, students please note that whenever the income is going to be taxable we are going ahead wo hum aage jane wale hai 
and we are going to divide the income under the five heads. Now, please try to understand it is very essential. Now, you are going to ask me the question, is it necessary to classify the income? And if yes, why? Now, even though it is a taxable income, it is necessary to divide the income or classify the income under the five heads because in each head of income, the deductions are going to be different. The provisions are going to be different. The charging is going to be different. And in few cases, even the taxability is also going to be different. So please note that even though the whole income is going to be a taxable, it is coming under the head taxable income. It is necessary. It is compulsion on the part of the person who is going to calculate the tax. First of all, divide the income under the five heads of income. Please note the income is divided under the five head is the first one is income from salary. Second one is income from house property. Number three is income from business or profession. Number four is capital gain. And number last is income from other sources. I think MCOM students may be aware of the heads of income. They have already calculated the sum or um, uh, calculated the tax also. But in case of TYBCOM students, they are going to study the income tax right now in this year. Please note that it is essential to classify the income under the five heads. Again, I am going to tell you, I am going to Taxable income hone ke baad classify karne ki jaruri hai kya? Ye panch heads mein dikhane ki jaruri hai kya? To mera kehna hai, it is necessary, ye karna hi padega. Ye karne ke siwa, there is no alternative. There is siwa hai, koi bhi ye, uh, chance nahi hai, there is no option. Because under the heads of income, the chargeability is going to be different. The provisions are going to be different. The deductions are going to be different. And actually the tax also in few cases is going to be different. If there is any mistake in classifying the income, then the ultimately the answer is going to be wrong. So please try to understand. It is very essential. It is necessary that the income taxable is taxable. So that is income from salary. So that is income from salary. I am talking about the same thing. But the new one is necessary that if the income is taxable, it is to be divided under five heads of income. That is income from salary, income from house property, income from business and profession, capital gain and other sources. Now I am going to start with the income from salary. But, but for just for your information, I am going to say, uh, tell you other things also. Before discussing income from salary, I am going to discuss this just one minute. That income from house property means the property held by the person. Income from business and profession means the income is getting from any kind of business. It may be a profession, it may be vocation, it may be a trading activity, it may be a manufacturing activity, it may be assembly activity, it may be a agency activity. Any kind of business or profession or vocation is there. It is classified under the head income from business or profession. Number four category is capital gain. What is meant by capital gain? That means during the year, if there is a transfer of asset or transfer or sale or purchase of asset that is going to be a capital gain that that we are going to discuss in the next lecture and the last one is income from other sources now if any income is not I, neither it is a income from salary neither it is a income from house property neither it is a business or profession or nor it is a capital gain then it is going to be income from other source that means maybe Income from other source includes income from interest on FD with bank, interest on <coughs> FD with company, interest on recurring deposit, saving deposit, dividend income. All these are called as income from other sources. So whenever we are going to solve the problem, whenever we are going to guide to other persons or friends and relatives, after getting the list of income, classify the income, first of all, taxable, and non-taxable. If it is taxable income, further classified under the five heads of income, that, that is very essential. Now, I am going to start with the income from salary. Now, I am going to discuss about now income from salary. <clears throat> now, income from salary is the first head of income. Now, we are going to discuss about the basic concepts. 
any payment made by the employer to the employee for the services rendered by him or her is chargeable to tax as salary. It is a contract of employment. So now what is the what is the income from salary? Now any person, any person getting income or payment from employer to an employee for the services rendered by him is chargeable to tax as salary. So salary come hoga. There must be some employer and employee. Our employee ko job paisa employer say milta hai. Try to understand. If an employee is getting income or payment from the employer, then that income is called income from salary. So please try to understand. The relationship is very important. Now, I have already written in the notes. The relationship is the, the employer and employee relationship is essential part of a contract of employment as against a contract for employment. So there is a difference between contract of employment and contract for employment. So please try to understand if the relationship, try to understand if the relationship of, between the two is of employer and employee, then it is going to be income from salary. If it, the relationship of uh, two person is not of employer and employee, it is not income from salary. So please try to understand the relationship kya hai? Wo ek dusre ka employer and employee hai, to do employee ko jo milta hai, that is going to be salary. Now, please try to understand, you may call anything, you may call remuneration, you may call salary, you may call labor charges, you may call wages. The relationship is important. So try to understand, when we are going to talk about income from salary, the base is the relationship. Any payment received, or um, uh, earned by the employee from employer for the services he has offered rendered is chargeable to tax as salary. So please try to understand salary may be of different types. It may be of basic salary. It may be of contract salary. It may be a wages. It may be a daily wages. But what is important is that the relationship. If there is a relationship of employer and employee, then we are going to call it as it call as salary and it is taxable under the head salary. Now I am going further. Now when we are going to call remuneration, when the amount is paid to the directors, then we are going to call it remuneration to directors. Now you are going to call me the uh, whether the remuneration to director is taxable as income from salary. My answer is the relationship is going to give the answer. If the director is full time director or executive director and the relationship of the company and the director is of employer and employee. Try to understand if the relationship of director and uh, the company is of employer and employee, then the uh, amount paid by the <clears throat> company to its director is income from salary. We call it as remuneration to directors. But the relationship of director and the company is not of employer and employee, then we are going to call as remuneration to director, but it is not taxable under the head income from salary. So try to understand, it depends upon the relationship. Now, when we are going to make the payment to the directors, we are going to use the word remuneration. But remuneration is nothing but the salary. When we are going to pay the amount to the administrative staff, office employee, we are going to call as a salary. When we are going to pay the amount, when the employer is going to pay the amount to the workers, we are going to use the word wages or labor charges. But the, whether you called it as remuneration, whether you are called as salary, whether you called as wages or labor charges, the relationship is important. If the relationship is of employer and employee, then we as a consultant are going to in, include that amount in the income from salary only. Wo remuneration ho, ya salary ho, ya tankha ho, ya munafa ho, whatever it may be, or it may be a labor charges. Yes, we are going to call these as the, please let me understand, we are going to call it as a income from salary. Now, I'm going ahead with this, the distinct, distinguished feature of a contract of employment that differentiate if it from 
uh, a contract of employment uh, is that the employer and master has a right to supervise and control the work done by the employee and not only directs what and when the work is to be done but also how it should be done employee is bound to carry out the said instruction so now when we are going to call it as a contract of employment so when it is going to be the contract of employment means the employer has right to supervise control explain the work to be done by the employee and employee is bound to carry out that said instruction then we are going to call that there is a relationship and it is a contract of employment on the other hand please try to understand on the other hand under a contract of employment the master sorry the contract for employment it is very important contract for employment comma the master merely directs what is to be done while the methodology for carrying out the work is left to the discretion of the servant or person who undertakes the work now take the case of a suppose painting is there now painting office painting is there uh, or college painting work is there now are you going to call that painter as the employee of the college of the, of the college no why because it is a contract for employment that uh, painting is to be done for suppose two rooms and a painter is going to take some amount maybe um, uh, 20000 per room so 40000 is going to be the total amount payable by the college to uh, to the painter now here the relationship is not of employer and or employee because it is not contract of employment but it is contract for employment सो so, वो क्या बताते हैं कॉलेज बताने वाले हैं हमको पेंटिंग करने का है कौन सा कलर है कौन सी क्वालिटी का मटेरियल है बट हाउ इट इज गोइंग टू बी डन इट इज ऑन द बेसिस इट इज टू बी डिपेंड अपॉन द पेंटर वो दो घंटे में करेगा या चार घंटे में करेगा या चार दिन में करेगा बिकॉज इट इज ही इज नॉट अ एम्प्लॉई ऑफ द कॉलेज सो ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड इन केस ऑफ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट ऑफ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट फॉर एम्प्लॉयमेंट द रिलेशनशिप इट इज नॉट ऑफ एम्प्लॉयर एंड एम्प्लॉई ये जो होता है वो एक मास्टर और उसका काम करने वाला वो आदमी ऐसा होता है सो देर देर इज देर इज नो रिलेशनशिप ऑफ एम्प्लॉयर एंड एम्प्लॉई देन इट इज नॉट इनकम फ्रॉम इनकम फ्रॉम सैलरी नाउ गोइंग अहेड विद दिस हियर बेसिस ऑफ चार्ज अंडर सेक्शन 15 ऑफ इनकम टैक्स एक्ट द बेसिस ऑफ चार्ज इज देयर एज पर सेक्शन 15 सैलरी कंसिस्ट ऑफ द फॉलोइंग नाउ हियर प्लीज चेक दिस here it is going to be one minute uh, uh, any salary due from the employer or former employer to an sac whether actually paid or not second one any salary paid or allowed to him in the previous year on behalf of employer though not due or before it became due and number 3 is any arrears of salary paid or allowed to him in the previous year now government is very very particular ये ये देने के क्या मत, उनका मतलब क्या है वाई दे गिवन दिस वन नाउ सैलरी इज गोइंग टू बी टैक्सेबल इन द प्रीवियस ईयर ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ आइदर इट इज ड्यू सेकंड वेदर आइदर इट इज पेड और इट इज मे बी द सैलरी इज पेड फॉर प्रीवियस ईयर इट इज गोइंग टू बी टैक्सेबल प्रीवियस ईयर मीन्स पहले ही साल का प्रिसीडिंग ईयर वो सब सैलरी चार्ज होता है ऑन इन द ईयर इन विच द इट इज ड्यू सो ऐसा हो सकता है कि सैलरी ड्यू है लेकिन पेमेंट किया नहीं लेकिन एम्प्लॉयर ने उसका ड्यू बेसिस है तो एम्प्लॉय को वो सैलरी मिला नहीं तो भी उसको इनकम फ्रॉम सैलरी में लिखना पड़ता है गवर्नमेंट इज नॉट गोइंग टू सेस जब तुमको मिलेगा उसी वक्त पेमेंट करो नहीं वंस द प्रोविजन इज डन बाय द मास्टर बाय द एम्प्लॉयर देन इट इज बाउंड टू इनकम फ्रॉम सैलरी फॉर द इनकम फॉर द एम्प्लॉय उन्होंने प्रोविजन किया है ना एक बार तो उसका सैलरी पेमेंट नहीं हुआ तो भी इनका इट इज गुड उसको बोलते हैं इनकम फ्रॉम सैलरी सो प्लीज ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड इनकम फ्रॉम सैलरी मे बी ड्यू बेसिस इट मे बी ऑन द पेड बेसिस और इट मे बी ऑन एरियर्स बेसिस और एडवांस बेसिस सो इट इज गोइंग टू बी टैक्सेबल नो यू विल कम टू नो दिस ऑन द इन द नेक्स्ट वन वॉट आई हैव रिटर्न हियर देन यू विल कम टू नो सैलरी इज चार्जेबल सो स्टूडेंट्स try to understand salary is chargeable to tax either on due basis or receipt basis whichever is earlier government bahut hoshiyar hai wo bolte hai jo pehle hota hai wo lene ka baad mein lene ka nahi that is once salary is chargeable to tax 
either on due basis or receipt basis, whichever is earlier, पैसा नहीं दिया तो मैंने पहले बताया था पैसा दिया नहीं है लेकिन प्रोविजन किया है ना तो टैक्स भरना पड़ेगा सो दैट इज इनकम फ्रॉम सैलरी वंस टैक्स ऑन ड्यू बेसिस वंस टैक्स ऑन ड्यू बेसिस द सेम सैलरी विल नॉट विल नॉट बी वंस अगेन बी टैक्स ऑन द रिसीट बेसिस एंड वैसा वर्षा एक प्रिंसिपल ध्यान में रखने का है कभी भी कौन सा भी इनकम दो बार टैक्स नहीं होता एक बार ही टैक्स होता सो नाउ इफ द गवर्नमेंट इज गोइंग टू चार्ज यू टैक्स ऑन ड्यू बेसिस देन इट इज नॉट गोइंग टू बी टैक्स वंस अगेन ऑन द रिसीट बेसिस और इफ द गवर्नमेंट हैज ऑलरेडी टैक्स ऑन यू ऑन द रिसीट बेसिस इट विल नॉट वंस अगेन टैक्स ऑन द ड्यू बेसिस एक बार ही टैक्स भरना पड़ता है सो दैट इज गोइंग टू कॉल एज ए इट इज गोइंग टू बी टैक्स ओनली वंस डबल टैक्सेशन इज नॉट अलाउड इट आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट फॉर द गवर्नमेंट गवर्नमेंट इज गोइंग टू से दैट वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू चार्ज एनी इनकम ट्वाइस दो बार चार्ज नहीं होगा सो दैट इज गोइंग टू बी द अनदर रूल अनदर पॉइंट टू बी नोटेड दैट इनकम कैन बी टैक्स ओनली वंस इट कैनॉट बी टैक्स ट्वाइस सो इट इज गोइंग टू बी द इनकम फ्रॉम सैलरी नो आई एम गोइंग टू discuss about further classification of income from salary so students i am going to wait again one for half minute or one minute for any query if you are any query you definitely ask me the question and other otherwise i am going ahead with that just one minute any queries students aapke notes aapko report likhna hai is par because this will be your practical number 5 audit and taxation तो आपको ये ध्यान रखना है कि जो जितने भी सर पढ़ा रहे हैं और जितना भी सर बोल रहे हैं यू हैव टू टेक नोट ऑफ दैट बिकॉज आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू टेक अगेन एंड अगेन दिस इज सेमेस्टर सिक्स सो दिस चैप्टर आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू कवर इन नेक्स्ट सेमेस्टर ओके सो बी रेडी टेक अ नोट्स ओके एंड इफ यू एनी क्यूरीज प्लीज आज सर कंटिन्यू सर थैंक यू सर now uh, students please note that once it is income from salary now we are going to ask the the types of salary there are a number of things are included in the word salary aisa nahi salary means only the basic salary salary includes now please try to understand salary includes salary wages annuity fees commission incentives or bonus etc so what is meant by salary salary may be a basic salary salary may be a wages salary may be annuity salary may be fees commission or incentive or bonus now please try to understand we have already discussed wo jo humne baat kiya tha what is the criteria for determining the salary that is the relationship of employer and employee ek bar relationship of employer employee ho gaya to employer jo jo deta hai employee ko wo salary hota hai uska naam kuch bhi ho कोई उसको सैलरी बोलेगा कोई उसको वेजेस बोलेगा कोई एन्यूटी बोलेगा कोई फीस बोलेगा कमीशन होगा या इंसेंटिव होगा और बोनस होगा और ऐसा भी हो सकता है ये सब दिया है उन्होंने इफ द एम्प्लॉयर हैज पेड सैलरी एज वेल एज फीस एज वेल एज कमीशन और इंसेंटिव और बोनस सब दिया है तो भी उसको इनकम फ्रॉम सैलरी ही बात करने का है इट इज इनकम फ्रॉम सैलरी सो वी आर गोइंग टू इंक्लूड सैलरी इंक्लूड इट मे बी अ सैलरी it may be a wages it may be a annuity it may be fees it may be a commission it may be a incentive or bonus so that is going to be income from salary because the relationship is of employer and employee and second thing is that whatever amount the employer is going to pay to the employee is going to be called as income from salary so kaun sa bhi naam se unhone de diya hoga we are going to call as income from salary yes या या एन्यूटी मींस एन्यूटी मींस सो प्लीज सो प्लीज ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड एन्यूटी मींस एनी पेमेंट डन एन्यू एवरी इयर सो एन्यूटी एन्यूटी मींस पेमेंट डन ऑन एन्युअल बेसिस यस इयर वाइज दैट वी कॉल्ड एज इयर वाइज एन्यूअल एन्यूटी मींस the payment done annually now uh, for for the sake of understanding i am going to discuss you uh, one part which is very important 
अभी जब तुमको जॉब मिलता है तो एम्प्लॉयर जो है वो पूछता है कि तुमको पेमेंट कैसा करने का है तुमको सैलरी का डिटेल्स चाहिए या कंसोलिडेटेड सैलरी चाहिए नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू गिव एग्जांपल सपोज तुमको जॉब मिल गया उन्होंने तुम्हारे इंटरव्यू में सिलेक्शन हो गया तुमको एम्प्लॉयी सिलेक्ट किया उन्होंने तुमको डेसिग्नेशन दिया यस यू आर गोइंग टू बी द अकाउंटेंट ऑफ आवर कंपनी देन दे आर गोइंग टू गिव द लेटर टू यू नाउ दे आर गोइंग टू से वी आर गोइंग टू फिक्स द योर रेम्यूनरेशन रुपीस 20000 पर मंथ नाउ द इट इज द पॉलिसी ऑफ द कंपनी हाउ दे आर गोइंग टू कैलकुलेट 20000 प्लीज ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड आई एम गोइंग टू यू अब मुझे लगता है कि एमकॉम के स्टूडेंट्स या बीकॉम के स्टूडेंट्स जो जॉब में है उसको मालूम होता है तो 20000 उनको सैलरी है नाउ द कंपनी इज गोइंग टू डिसाइड अबाउट द पॉलिसी हाउ दे आर गोइंग टू पे द सैलरी दैट मींस दे आर गोइंग टू से आउट ऑफ 20000 वी आर गोइंग टू कॉल 15000 एज बेसिक सैलरी एंड 5000 एज डियरनेस अलाउंस सो यू आर गोइंग टू गेट 20000 बट हाउ वी आर गोइंग टू पे यू 15000 एज ए बेसिक सैलरी एंड 5000 एज dearness allowance so you will get 20000 as salary but it is going to be in breakup we call it as salary in breakup so you may get a salary 20000 but he is going to write down in the salary slip basic salary is 15000 and uh, uh, what do you call um, uh, da is of rupees 5000 so 20000 is the salary in breakup another one is that he is going to say nahi nahi i don't want to do any breakup i am going to pay you 20000 that we called as a consolidated salary so they are not going to give breakup directly they are going to write down consolidated salary please note a salary may be in breakup or consolidated salary you are going to calculate that amount in the income from salary wo breakup dete hai ya nahi dete hai it is income from salary so please try to understand the income may be that is salary may be in breakup और इट मे बी अंसोलिडेट सैलरी कंसोलिडेट सैलरी मीन वो ब्रेकअप देते नहीं वो पूरा पैसा देते हैं बीस हजार दोनों तरफ बीस हजार मिलता है लेकिन एक तरफ से वो ब्रेकअप देते हैं कि वो बीस हजार कैसा कैलकुलेट किया है तो हमने पंद्रह हजार तुमको बेसिक सैलरी दिया है पांच हजार रुपए डीए दिया है नहीं तो दो बोलते हैं कि वी आर गोइंग टू पे रुपीज ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड एज कंसोलिडेटेड सैलरी लेकिन दोनों जगह ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड इट इज इनकम फ्रॉम सैलरी बिकॉज इट इज इनकम फ्रॉम employer to the employee and the relationship is of employer and employee so now this is very clear now in salary includes salary wages annuity fees commission incentive bonus etc second is perquisites which includes now what is mean by perquisites perquisite means any payment in addition to salary any payment in addition to salary now it may be a rent free accommodation it may be a benefit or any immunity uh, granted free of cost or at a concession rate or esop employer stock option uh, plan or it may be a nps contribution means nps means national pension scheme or new pension system that is called called contribution here perquisites no perquis ek baat dhyan mein rakho perquisites means salary to hota hai tankha to hota hai uske alawa कोई और बेनिफिट जो मिलता है उसको बोलते हैं परक्विजिट्स नो टेक एग्जांपल ऑफ अ केस इफ यू आर सिलेक्टेड इन ए कंपनी एंड अ कंपनी इज गोइंग टू पे रुपीस 20000 टू यू एज अ सैलरी नाउ यू आर गोइंग सपोज आफ्टर 2 3 मंथ्स इफ दे हैव शिफ्टेड यू फ्रॉम पुणे टू बॉम्बे और मुंबई एंड दे आर रेडी टू पे यू एडिशनल सैलरी दे आर गोइंग टू से वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू पे यू बेसिक और डीए बट वी आर गोइंग टू पे योर रेंट फॉर द प्रीमाइसिस जो तुमको तुमको वो जो मुंबई में जॉब हम देने वाले हैं वहां जो तुम तुम्हारा जो किराया है वो हम देने वाले हैं दैट इज गोइंग टू बी अगेन टैक्सेबल इन योर हैंड्स एज परक्विजिट इट कॉल्ड एज रेंट फ्री अकोमोडेशन दिया समोज उनका क्वार्टर्स है कंपनी का क्वार्टर्स मुंबई में है और उन्होंने तुमको क्वार्टर्स में जगह दिया सो दैट इज गोइंग टू बी परक्विजिट इन एनी इन एडिशन टू द सैलरी वी आर गोइंग टू कॉल एज परक्विजिट now take the example of a case in most of the cases in case of it company the company is going to pay salary as well as they are going to provide laptop or computer or mobile to their employee that is nothing but the perquisites they may also provide vehicles two wheeler four wheeler so that is going to call as perquisites what is meant by perquisites anything in addition to 
सैलरी सैलरी के अलावा कुछ तो बेनिफिट दिया है सो दैट वी कॉल्ड एज ए प्रक्विजिट तो प्रक्विजिट में क्या आता है कंपनी का कोई क्वार्टर्स है जो आर्मी का होता है क्वार्टर्स होता है या बड़े कंपनी का क्वार्टर्स होता है उससे क्वार्टर्स को क्या बोलते हैं वी आर गोइंग टू कॉल्ड एज ए प्रक्विजिट इन इनकम टैक्स सैलरी इन एडिशन टू सॉरी पेमेंट इन एडिशन टू सैलरी दैट वी कॉल्ड एज ए प्रक्विजिट नाउ Accommodation is provided or anything is uh, payment is done we called as a <coughs> perquisite. ऐसा भी हो सकता है कि the accommodation may be furnished or it may be unfurnished. It may be possible that with the accommodation yes some queries there. Yeah yeah yeah. Uh, in case of uh, uh, ESOP employee stock option plan or program. Uh, in case of senior uh, employee, the company is going to instead of paying the salary, they are going to issue the shares of that company. In in case of payment, uh, uh, in case of salary, they are going to give shares of the company. जैसे मैं बात कर रहा हूँ इंफोसिस का. Now if the employee is in the company and employee is uh, happy with the uh, sorry employer is happy with the employee, so the company Infosys is going to give some shares of the company. in addition to salary to that employee that we called as a employee stock option the employee employee has option to sell the share in the market at as per his convenience samjho 10 share diya hai infosys ka to wo free mein free mein milta nahi hai please try to understand the employer that is infosys is giving 10 shares to its employee it is going to be a perquisites it is not free of charge अभी तुम पूछेंगे दस शेयर मिला है पैसा कहां मिला है यस द कंपनी हैज गिवन शेयर्स इंस्टेड ऑफ मनी सो इसको बोलते हैं परक्विजिट इन एडिशन टू सैलरी वो ऐसा भी हो सकता है वो वो एम्प्लॉई दो साल के बाद वो इंफोसिस का शेयर बेचेगा उसी वक्त उसको पैसा मिलेगा लेकिन कंपनी इज गोइंग टू कैलकुलेट इनकम फ्रॉम सैलरी एज परक्विजिट इन द इयर इन विच द शेयर आर गिवन This is what. Next one is NPS. What is mean by NPS? National Pension System or New Pension System. So the government, those government employee who are not going to get pension, the what uh, the government uh, sorry uh, the uh, company or the organization where pension is not applicable. In that case, the employer in insist to open NPS account <coughs> with the government and. the gover uh, uh, that that is the contributory pension in the simple words the contributory pension that means for your pension you contribute the amount to the government in few cases employer yes okay any query in in few cases employer is going to contribute to the nps that is going to be perquisites please try to understand anything amount paid by the employer to the employee sir uh, unmute ka sir mai karunga atre sir unmute ka unmute unmute kiye aapko ek minute ek minute just a minute okay okay can you hear me yes 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 sir ya aap bolis sir so, so next is in, in profit in lieu of salary perquisite chhod ke abhi bhi aur ek hai profit in lieu of salary that is the compensation from the employer another is any payment from the employer from uh, from uh, P, for a pf for a pf for pf public provident fund or sorry public uh, provident fund for provident fund or other fund next one is any other any amount received before joining or ses, after cessation of employment jo so compensation dete hai usi bolte hai profit in lieu of salary that is compensation hota hai so the compensation paid by the employer to the employee we are going to called as profit in lieu of salary salary ke badle mein jo kuch deta hai usko bolte hai profit in lieu of salary now the very important uh, part is next is salary includes allowances now there are number of allowances are there and that we are going to call at part of salary so allowances means it means a fixed amount of money paid regularly 
in addition to the salary for meeting specific requirements of the employee. Now, those who are in employment, you know, there are a number of allowances are there. It means a fixed amount is paid regularly to the employee that we call as allowances. Now, allowances includes, it includes following allowances. I have given example. Diya hai. So, it may be a dearness allowance. It may be a house rent allowance. We call it as HRA. It may be a LTA, leave travel allowance. It may be a uniform allowance. In addition to that, it may be a travel or transport allowance, conveyance allowance, education allowance, overtime allowance, medical allowance. It may be a tiffin or lunch allowance. So allowances may be of different types. Please note, even though it is called as allowances, it is going to be a part of salary. It is included in income from salary. So I am going to say once again, before discussing that, so income from salary includes perquisites, profit in lieu of salary, as well as allowances. Now, allow, it is depend upon the employer. Now, it is uh, the policy of the company or the organization which allowances to be given. So it may be a dearness allowance. Government employees are going to get dearness allowance. Normally, whether it is a central government or state government, they are going to allowance DA. DA means dearness allowance. What is meant by HRA? House rent allowance. Now, suppose the job is in Mumbai and the accommodation is not available or the quarters are not available. Then the company is going to pay house rent allowance to its employee that we call as a HRA. So that is called as house rent allowance. LTA, leave travel allowance. That is going to be for the uh, uh, employee, uh, employee, if he is going to uh, going back to his home once in a year, so the LTA is given, leave, leave travel concession is given. Similarly, the uniform allowance in most of the cases, the uniform is provided uh, to the employee. So the allowances for uniform is also given. It may be a washing allowances may be given. So that we call as as a part of allowance. In most of the cases, transport allowance is given. Now, those who are working from home, they are not getting transport allowance. But those who are going in office or factory or in an uh, organization, then they are going to get transport allowance. Or they also may get conveyance allowance. In may, most of the cases, they are not going to give the um, uh, cash, but they have to submit the petrol bills. That is nothing but the conveyance allowance. In most of the cases, they are going to pay education allowance for the children. If the uh, um, uh, children of the employee are in uh, uh, sorry uh, in schools, so the employ employer is going to give uh, education allowance to its employees. Overtime allowance, you know, those who are going to work more than the given time, then we are going to call it as overtime. It may be possible that the uh, employee is working. Uh, in the vacation, he may be working on the holidays that we call as a overtime allowance. In few companies, in few organizations, medical allowance is given. So employer is going to give fixed charges or it may be possible that employee has to submit the medical bill to the employer and employer then is going after submission of the bills. The employee is uh, going to get the reimbursement of charges that is medical allowance. In few cases, in case of factory, the lunch is provided at a concessional rate or it may be a tiffin is provided to the employee that we are going to call as tiffin allowance or lunch allowance. So it is again, allowances is a part of, please try to understand, allowance is a part of salary. Salary includes allowances. I have given allowances and so that is going to be included in the it may be a special allowance is given, training allowance is given to the employee. So that is very important. You have to keep in mind. The last part is that in case of salary is the retirement benefits. You know, in case of government employees, they, go, uh, they, they are getting pension after retirement. Pension is also a part of salary. Please note, even though the employee is no more in the service, he is going to get pension it is going to be income from salary. Now, why? 
it is because the he is getting pension the employee is getting pension out of the employer and employee relationship so pension is also a part of salary it is income from salary what is meant by leave encashment leave encashment means at the time of retirement or at the time of uh, 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 what do you call switch over of job if some leave is available unhone kuch chuttiya nahi liya hoga so that uh, employer is going to pay on the uh, for that leave encashment that the employer is going to pay the amount for unutilized leave every employee has got some earned leave some <clears throat> casual leave if he is not utilized that Uh, uh during the per particular year or particular service the com the company the organization is going to pay some amount as encashment of this leave that we called as a leave encashment and the last one is gratuity i have taken here that is at the time of retirement or switching over from job uh, employer is going to pay some amount as gratuity to the its employee normally if employee works for 5 years or more the gratuity is supposed to be payable by the employer to the employee again the gratuity is going to be the part of salary so we are going to call it as income from salary even though the gratuity is paid by the employer to the employee so again i am going to wait for few minutes for one minute if there is query is there you can ask me in the right chat chat box any queries आते से कब तक लेंगे आप नहीं नहीं कितना कितना है टाइम परमिट अलाउडेड कितना है आज आज जुमा है ना सर हाँ नमाज को जाएंगे बच्चे कितने नमाज नमाज को जाएंगे सब बच्चे कितने बजे सवा एक बजे आएंगे सब बच्चे नमाज को एक दस पांच दस मिनट में मैं खत्म करता हूँ हाँ पांच मिनट में खत्म कर दो फिर हम कल ज्यादा लेंगे एक घंटा यस ओके 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 थैंक यू so now now uh, students just minute uh, okay to, uh, tomorrow i i will explain once again the nps okay definitely i will explain uh, please try to understand the deductions from salaries pehle hum kya karte hain income from salary calculate karte hain usme se now government has given some benefit to the employee employee that we called as one is standard deduction a standard deduction is allowed against the salary income subject to a limit of rupees 50000 or the amount of salary whichever is less every employee if he is going to get income from salary has got some benefit that is called deduction from his income that we called as a standard deduction so a standard deduction is allowed against the salary income maximum rupees 50000 or the amount of salary whichever is less now i am going to explain you suppose a, a, a employee is there he is going to get 40000 per month as salary multiply by 12 that is 4 lakh 80000 is his salary income then we are going to write down income from salary 4 lakh 80000 then we are going to deduct less standard deduction 50000 and outer column we are going to write down 4 lakh 30000 so every employer uh, sorry employee employee is getting deduction that we call as a standard deduction that of rupees 50000 now what is what is the next one that is the amount of salary which ever is less now suppose the salary is paid only for one month that is going to be 40000 during that month and and the employer employee has left the job so he is not going to get 50000 deduction he is going to get only 40000 as deduction so 50000 or less which ever is less is going to be deducted suppose aisa bhi ho sakta hai कि उसको सैलरी एक महीना की मिली बिकॉज इट इज गोइंग टू बी ओनली फोर्टी थाउजेंड पर मंथ एंड ओनली सैलरी इज पेड फॉर फोर्टी थाउजेंड सो ही इज नॉट गोइंग टू गेट स्टैंडर्ड डिडक्शन फिफ्टी थाउजेंड बट ही इज गोइंग टू गेट स्टैंडर्ड डिडक्शन ओनली ऑफ रुपीज फोर्टी थाउजेंड बिकॉज द अमाउंट इज फिफ्टी थाउजेंड और द अमाउंट ऑफ सैलरी विच एवर इज लेस आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस द सेकेंड डिडक्शन एंटरटेनमेंट अलाउंस इफ नाउ प्लीज ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड इन केस ऑफ एंटरटेनमेंट अलाउंस if the allowance is paid to the employee then the deduction is available if the allowance is entertainment allowance is not paid to the employee the employee is not going to get the deduction and what is the maximum limit 
the deduction is of rupees 5000 maximum deduction is 5000 dear students please try to understand entertainment allowance is available to the employee if entertainment allowance is given by the employer to the employee if the entertainment allowance is not given to the employee it is not applicable and i am going to say you that 95% the govern uh, now the entertainment allowance is not provided or not paid by the employer to the employee so now in the practical life entertainment allowance is very very rare case bahut kam jagah entertainment allowance dete hain aur last deduction is available that is the tax on employment in case of profession tax if it is tax on employment it is also deductible as income from salary so what we are going to do we are going to write down income from salary usme se standard deduction deduct karenge usme se entertainment allowance diya hai to deduct karenge zyada se zyada 5000 tak and the last one is tax on employment that is the profession tax payment kiya hai to if it is paid to so start to understand if the tax is paid then it is going to be deducted if tax is not paid the amount is not deducted so please try to understand in income from salary three deductions are available first is standard deduction second is entertainment allowance and the last is tax on employment for example the profession tax now i am going to conclude that income from salary is the first of all the relationship must be of employer and employee there are various types of salary categories there all are going to be included income from salary and the deductions are available are standard deduction entertainment allowance and tax of employment so i am going to conclude this one i am thankful to the college as well as for the uh, uh, professor pirjade sir for giving me the opportunity to discuss with you as well as for uh, i am thankful to you for uh, uh, patience here uh, here uh, hearing from your end i am very thankful to you again tomorrow we are going to meet any queries there you can write down any query is there you can ask me tomorrow also yes so uh, i am going to hand it over to professor pirjade sir so thank, thank you sir you. thank you very much sir very informative lecture sir thank you once again and thank you once again all and i am just uh, sending you the attendance yes no sir, deduction both, means bahut acha tha sir very very informative thank you sir okay thank you sir yeah yeah thank you sir uh, link bheja hai maine aap sabko uh, the attendance link for ty bcom and for mcom you will get the separate link in a group okay so atre sir bahut uh, informative tha aapka lecture income from salary thank you sir thank you yes स्टार्टेड अकाउंट लेक्चर देना और हम टीचर लेक्चर देना है डिफरेंट थिंग ही हैज थर्ड ऑफ नॉलेज ऑफ इनकम फ्रॉम सैलरी वेरी नाइस थैंक यू सर थैंक यू वी आर लर्न समथिंग न्यू सर इन योर लेक्चर ओके मेनी मेनी थैंक्स फॉर योर काइंड वर्ड्स या ओके बच्चे अटेंडेंस दीजिए आप लिंक आपको दिया है मैंने अटेंडेंस देने के बाद में यू कैन लीव थैंक यू आई विल वेट फॉर वन मिनट एंड आई विल एंड द मीटिंग और टुमारो सर विल टेक अनदर सम कंसेप्ट्स ओके बी रेडी फॉर दैट दैट विल बी वेरी इंफॉर्मेटिव ये जो लेक्चर्स हो रहे हैं ना जैसे हम सीए जो करते बच्चे उनके वो बच्चे वो बच्चों के लिए एक्चुअली सर लेक्चर देते हैं एक्चुअली एंड सर इज वेरी नॉलेजेबल तो थैंक यू सर आप बैठे जितना नॉलेज है सर के पास वो लीजिए और आपको खुद को अपग्रेड कीजिए आप ठीक है एमकॉम का जो अटेंडेंस होगा वो आपको ग्रुप में आपको मैं सेंड करता हूँ एमकॉम का अटेंडेंस ठीक है अठारह उन्नीस का नहीं दिया जोया तुमने सत्रह अठारह के दो बार भेज दिया जोया टुमारो 
uh, okay so we'll uh, inform you about the exam okay for mcom lecture or exam you have to attend uh, you have to attend uh, tomorrow's lecture then we'll we will decide the exam dates okay same time lecture same time hoga 12 o'clock okay sir thank you thank you sir thank you okay